All right, welcome back, children. Um, so we are going to continue on um, with more. Right? So here we go. Uh, so we're going to continue on. It's going to be distances still. Uh, distances continued, I guess. So um, on we go. So we've done a point to a line in R2, a point to a line in R3, a point to a plane in uh, R3, obviously. Uh, now we're going to talk about a line to a plane in R3. And I'm going to tell you, the stuff that we're going to cover today won't take us all that long because um, it's, it's, it's sort of stuff we've done before. And I want you to think about maybe why that is. So if we consider this case here, so we've got our plane, right? So here's a plane. Uh, so we got a plane. Now, if I'm thinking about the distance from a line to a plane in R3, and we're always talking about the shortest distance. Okay, so the shortest distance. Now, think about the different ways that this, this could occur. If the line is anything other than parallel to the plane, what's that going to mean? It means that sooner or later the line is going to hit the plane. And so it's not going to be a distance anymore. It's going to be a point of intersection. So, you know, it's, it's worth noting that this means the line must be parallel to the plane, right? Because if it's not, otherwise, they intersect, right? So that means it's got to be parallel, right? So if I take and I draw my line, here's a line. It's got to be parallel. Um, it doesn't really matter what point I look at on this line because the distance to the plane has to be the same in each case, right? Because it's parallel, the distance from any point on the line has to be the same. So the implication is this is the same as a point to a plane, right? Because any one of those points is the same distance from the plane as any other point to the plane. So this case absolutely collapses into a point to a plane, right? And so then that means that it's going to be the exact same, right? It's going to be the same formula that we had before, which was, you know, the distance is going to be equal to uh, like the magnitude of AX naught plus BY naught plus CZ naught plus D um, over, and I'm just going to simplify it and say the magnitude of the normal vector, right? And so that is the same. So, yay, a line to a plane, we're done. Because the only way that it's going to be aligned to a plane and not have a point of intersection is if it's parallel. Now, if, if we wanted to save ourselves some time, if I simply presented a question to you and I said, here is a line, here is a plane, if they intersect, find the point of intersection. If they are parallel, find the distance. Think about the different ways that you could check that quickly without turning the handle on everything, right? How could we check that quickly? Well, hopefully you can spot that if the line is parallel to the plane, it must be perpendicular to the normal vector, right? That plane will have a normal vector. So you could take the direction vector from the line and dot product it with the normal vector from the plane. And if the dot product is zero, that means that the line is parallel to the plane. And that means that we would then jump in and find what the distance is. If the dot product were anything other than zero, that means that the line is not parallel to the plane. And if the line is not parallel to the plane, 
that means it's going to have a point of intersection. And so you would find what that point of intersection is using the math that we have already covered. Yay us, we have done it. That is a point to, or a line to a plane. And really it's the same thing as a point to a plane. All right, so how about we continue on? So that was a line to a plane in R3. How about the distance from a plane to a plane in R3? Well, again, hopefully you can think about what's going on here. So I'm just gonna draw up my hand really quickly. So there is a plane, there is a plane. The only way that we can have a distance from these planes is if, you know, the shortest distance is always gonna be, you know, right angles to these things. Um, if these planes are anything but parallel, they're going to intersect in a line, right? So all of a sudden that means that any points that we choose on these planes, the distance is gonna be the same, right? Just like a line to a plane, it is the same thing. So, you know, this reduces, again, to a point to a plane. Right? That's what it reduces to. It has to reduce to that, because if it doesn't reduce to that, that means that they are going to intersect. And if they intersect, there is no distance between them. There is a line of intersection. Yay us. So that has covered that. Awesome. Now, on to really, I'll be honest, children, this is sort of the last topic that we need to cover in calculus and vectors in high school. Um, and this is going to be a little bit more challenging, but only a little bit more challenging. And this is going to be the shortest distance between skew lines in R3. So imagine that you came up with a random equation of a line and someone else came up with a random equation of a line in R3. If they were genuinely random, the probability of them intersecting is infinitesimal. Almost certainly um, they aren't going to intersect. But they are going to pass by each other somewhere. And imagine that you had those two random lines and you put a really strong rubber band across the two of them. The rubber band would settle into the shortest distance between those two lines. So if you kind of put your you know, finger in your right hand, finger on your left hand, pointing sort of different directions in R3, if you slammed a rubber band onto your two fingers, it would slide if it was a frictionless surface to the shortest distance. So a shortest distance does in fact exist between two skew lines. And so it's very hard to represent this. I will do my, my darndest, um, it's, but it's hard because, you know, this, this really, it, it keeps on going and the other one, it keeps on going. And so it's gonna look like they intersect, but in fact, you can envision that, um, I guess the red one is in front of the blue one. Um, you know, if I were to slap a rubber band on this and, it, you know, it had lots of tension, it would, it would come to, you know, the shortest distance between them. So maybe it's right there. Maybe that's like this rubber band would and slide down to there. And that would be the shortest distance. Now, the shortest distance is going to be at right angles to each of those lines. Okay. That is the distance between the skew lines. So... This seems really, really, really complicated. But what we can actually do is this skew line has a direction vector on it, right? And this skew line will also have a direction vector on it. If we take this direction vector and put it here, maybe I should use different colors, that would be prudent. Um, this color here, let's say. So this one's got, oh, I didn't choose the color, sorry. Uh, so this one's got a direction vector. If what we did is we lifted this direction vector and put it also over here. So I lifted this direction vector up, I put it over here. If we think about what it takes to define a plane, a direction vector, a direction vector, and a point. Well, we must know some point on this line. So we could use those three things. So use, maybe I'll label them. So I'll call this one D1, and the other one was black. 
this one is going to be D2. Um, if we use D1 and D2, and I'm going to call that P0 and P0, we can create a plane, right? We could create a plane from that. And we would do that because hopefully you remember how to do that. Um, you would cross those two direction vectors and that would create for us a normal vector, right? So we can create a plane. So we cross, we do D1 crossed with D2, and that's going to give us a normal vector. We would use that normal vector, so we could call it, um, I don't know, X, no, that's bad. Uh, how about R, S, and T? Uh, so our normal vector maybe is R, S, and T. And we could then say, all right, well, we have our direction vector is R, X, plus S, Y, plus T, Z, plus D equals zero. And then we can take this point, X naught, Y naught, Z naught, and substitute it in. So we would have that. And then we would solve for D. And then we have our plane equation. And so we've created effectively a plane out of this line and the direction vector from this line. Well, by default, this line is now parallel. So we have yet again collapsed two skew lines into a case where it is a parallel line to a plane, and then we know a parallel line to a plane collapses to a point to a plane. So this also becomes a point to a plane. Okay, so it becomes a point to a plane as well. So I want to do an example of this one. Okay, so I think the example of this one is important. Okay, so here we go. So imagine the following. Uh, given L1 is going to be 2x minus 3y plus... No, that's a plane. Silly, silly, silly. Let's go back. Um, how about x, y, z is equal to 2, 1, negative 3, plus t times 1, 5, negative 2, okay? And then L2 is going to be x, y, z is equal to, I don't know, 1, negative 1, 5, and plus s times 1, 0, negative 1, uh, and T and S are both members of the reals. So I want to find the shortest distance between those planes. Okay, so I want to find the shortest distance. So to do that, we're going to create a plane out of one of the lines in the direction vector from the other line. Okay, so I'm going to turn L1 into a plane. Okay, so I'm going to turn L1 into a plane using direction vector 2. So this is D1 and this is D2. So to do that, I'm going to have to cross D1 with D2. So we're going to do d1 crossed with d2. All right, so we're going to have 1, 5, negative 2, 1, 5, negative 2, and then d2 is 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1. Don't get to play, don't get to play, and then we're going to do downy, which is negative 5, minus uppy, which is 0, so it's negative 5, comma. Negative 2 plus 1, which would be negative 1, I guess, 
and 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So there is, in theory, my normal vector, but normal vectors should be reduced in lowest terms and positive. So that is going to be equal to 5, 1, and 5. Okay, so that's my normal vector. Right, so there it is. So that means that the equation of my plane is going to be 5x plus 1y, or so plus y, plus 5z plus d equals 0. And I'm going to substitute in this point. So substitute in uh, p naught, right? And so we're going to do that, and it's so 2, 1, negative 3. So 2, 1, negative 3. All right, so we're going to have 5 times 2 plus 1 plus 5 times negative 3 plus d equals 0, okay? So that's going to be 10 plus 1 minus 15 plus d equals 0. That's negative 4, move it over. So d equals 4. So our plane now, so we're going to you know, turn into plane 1, is going to be 5x plus y plus 5z plus 4 equals 0. So there's my plane. So now it just becomes an exercise. There's a plane. And the other one, we have L2, right? And L2, I'll write it down here. So 1, negative 1, 5. So x, y, z is equal to 1, negative 1, 5, plus s times uh, 1, 0, negative 1. 1, 0, negative 1. So now it's a plane, right? There's my plane and a line, but a line has to be parallel to it, right? It has to be parallel, and so that means that if I substitute this, or I, there is the point I can use, so this just becomes a point to a plane, right? And so to do a point to a plane, I remember that distance is equal to ax naught plus by naught plus CZ naught plus D magnitude over the magnitude of the normal vector. All right, so on we go. So this is going to be then the distance is equal to, uh, let's see, so it's going to be 5 times 1 plus, and then I'm using this point here, so 1 times, in theory, negative 1, uh, plus 5 times 5 plus 4, and we're going to take the magnitude of that, although it is positive, uh, over the magnitude of the normal vector. So it is the root of 5 squared plus 1 squared plus 5 squared. So that's going to be equal to 5 minus 1 is 4, uh, plus 4 is 8, plus 25 is 33, over the root of 51. And root of 51 in the denominator is a bad thing, so we're going to multiply by the root of 51 over the root of 51. And so it's going to be 33 root 51 over 51. And there it is. So believe it or not, folks, um, that is pretty much the course. Um, and, and I honestly feel pretty good, and you folks should feel pretty comfortable with where we're at. In fact, we have covered more than a lot of courses or a lot of schools would have covered um, in a regular year. Uh, now, we haven't necessarily done as many examples in person, and we haven't assessed as frequently, which often kids pushes kids to um, delve a little bit more deeply in their understanding. However, we should feel pretty good about where we are. Okay, so uh, there you go. So I'm going to post the homework for this as well. Um, what I would ask of you, and I'll put these instructions on Google Classroom as well, is um, I'm going to dedicate next week to review, to revisit things. And it can be anything from the course. And so I'll put this up on Google Classroom, soliciting questions that you'd like to see. But that's what I'm going to dedicate next week to, because I want you to feel pretty decent about where we're at. Um, so if you know where you're headed post-secondarily, which I'm sure that most of you do, um, take a look and see what things are important, what things that you think that you, you know, don't have a comfort level in, and uh, what you'd like your, your knowledge refreshed or bolstered in. And that way, 
I can create some online videos for those as well. And, and these online videos are going to be on YouTube for as long as, as, you know, for the foreseeable future. So that means that, you know, when you're off at post-secondary, you know, oh, I can go and check Galbraith's channel and I can get that information. Okay. Anyways, I hope you're all doing well.